respect it. Um, but as you say, it's unique. Not many people do it. We need to really showcase the value. You know, we've 90% of startups fail, 90% of our startups are still going. In this episode of Startups of London, we are at the offices of you Create. So the startup tech scene is quite different in the sense that there are accelerators, incubators, investors, startups, and there are all these companies in between mixing and switching these models. So you Create is quite unique in that sense. They are not an accelerator exactly. Uh, they are not. Uh, they are not an investor exactly. Uh, but they they have elements of those, to my understanding. So they help startups build their products faster by helping them with technical and product people. But we'll see, we'll, we'll see the office and we'll listen to the whole story from them. See you inside. Hello, Matt. Hi. Thank you for inviting us to your office. Absolute pleasure. So you create is quite a unique model and let's immediately start with that. Um, and I've researched and, and we've had some conversations before this face-to-face -face meeting. Um, it's, it's not a VC, it's not an accelerator, it's not an incubator, it's, it's not a co-working space. It's, it has elements of each of these, but how do they come together and work in harmony, I do not know. So what we tried to do when we first started, we saw um, Lots of people trying to build startups and a lot of them making the, the same mistakes. Uh, and what we saw is that, you know, accelerators are good for some things, agencies are good for other things, uh, obviously investors are very important, um, incubators are, are good for some things, but none of them really did everything that uh, a startup needs when they're, when they're going through their journey. So we, we tried to combine them all and create this, this, this model that's part accelerator, part agency. You know, part investment house um, and really build that ecosystem. We're very selective of the type of founders that we work with. So usually we work with non-technical founders, so founders that can't code. Uh, and what we found was, through our research, is that a lot of non-technical founders, they, they're looking for a CTO, they go to an agency, and a lot of them are, are burnt for, um, for the same reasons. Um, so our model is able to sort of de-risk that for them. There are, you know, there are two really hard things when you're building a business. Make sure you're solving the right problem. Um, and then obviously you need to be able to build the technology. Um, so we felt like there was a gap in the market to do both. So we have a number of different um, parts to our framework. So you'll see on our website we have Spark, Flash, Strike and Bolt. Uh, and basically they are set up uh, and designed for a founder at every single part of their journey. So Spark is our accelerator. Um, this allows people to come to us with just a seedling of an idea uh, and really run it through our process to see whether there's something worth building at the end of it. So everything that we do when we're trying to build startups is trying to de-risk it. We, we just don't want founders to waste their money and start chucking huge sums of money into things that ultimately don't work. Uh, and then Flash is when we just build something really quickly, get it to market as quickly as possible. Yet again, a lot of the reasons why uh, startups fail is they spend too long building stuff. Uh, you know, so they're locked in a room, not getting any um, user feedback or anything like that. Uh, and then sort of six, seven months later, they build something, they've spent too much money, and then they wonder why it doesn't work. Um, and then Strike is basically a founder's outsourced in-house team. So we put together a, a customized team. Um, that's not such a, a quick build, that's, that's more of a, a customized build uh, and then Bolt is where we just provide straight developers so we just provide developers as an extension to their team. And has, has you create gone through any iterations when until you found uh, the sweet spot of where it works? We're trying to make up we're trying to make our framework clearer at the moment um, you know it's it's not necessarily the most clear um, so we're, we're talking about simplifying it right down um, We've experimented with different ways of delivery. We've experimented with, should we use contractors? Should everything be in-house? Um, we've, we've experimented with the type of founders that we've worked with. Um, we've experimented with, should we have big teams from day one, um, which is quite expensive for the, for the founders, or should we start the smaller team as possible and just get something to market as quickly as possible? So everything we've done over the last four years has just been learning, but we're always learning on the job. And have you received any investment to date? So we, we did this on a tiny investment four years ago. Um, and I mean ultimately actually we ended up uh, the first ever person we ever worked with didn't pay us so uh, we did it on a lot less than than what we raised so we uh, uh, Some, sometimes that, that, that turns out to be very valuable to set expectations right uh, I mean we just definitely tried not to do that again so <laughs> so we've done it about 50,000 pounds up to now okay. um, and I mean you, you've almost bootstrapped then 
We've bootstrapped. We've bootstrapped. We've always been, that's, you know, founders had to pay to play, to come in. Uh, that gave us the cash flow to be able to grow the business. Um, we are raising more investment at the moment. Um, in the next sort of three to six months, we're going through that process now. So Joe, Omar, thanks for being a part of this chat. Um, very interesting company you create, and I'd like to learn about your experiences. So can you tell about yourself, your role in the company? How long have you been working here to, uh, here to start with? Yeah, sure. So yeah, I'm Joe. Um, I've been at the company for over three years now. So the longest standing PM, I think, now. Um, so I've seen it kind of transition right from the very early stages all the way through to where we are now as kind of a much bigger organization. So there's been lots of really interesting stuff happen, and it's been good to be part of it. And the startup's lifetime, three years, is just a decade long. So how, how did the organization organization evolve in, the, in this time? So when I joined we were very much kind of focused on just sort of building kind of products and we would satisfy the need for founders who just couldn't build anything technically. So we quite quickly got very good at just building technology products but then we quickly realised that the biggest problem our founders had was not really the tech, it was more about sort of the business thinking, the planning, everything else. So we started to offer more and more advice in terms of maybe building a different product or different strategies, uh, bringing some marketing in, bringing some advertising in. And and that's how we sort of start to become this more of a startup, uh, kind of accelerator, incubator, consultancy sort of style model. Um, and then it eventually evolved into a, a sort of a co founder model. So, very much start off with pure tech, and now we're doing loads of other things, which has been good for me. So, Amar, you've just recently joined the company, right? Yeah, uh, just over two weeks, let's say, like two and a half weeks. Fantastic. So what was your role here and what are your first observations? Um, I'm a PM here. Um, well, my first observation would be that the company is made up of really unique people. I think the people are what make a company. Um, especially in this company, everyone is really like encouraging, everyone helps each other grow. And I think that is probably the biggest thing because like having a fancy office or having like good computers or having you know certain clients those are things that more or less anyone can do but just having that collaborative uh, environment where you're allowed to make mistakes but make mistakes quick and learn fast and, and pull from everyone else's areas of expertise um, I think that's great and how welcome they make it feel right from the get -go. I mean I've only been here two and a half weeks I feel like I've been here two and a half months. What, what do you think um, are some challenges and some areas of further growth for the business as you keep scaling into the future? Yeah, so we, we kind of want to work with more and more startups in, uh, in different spaces and basically make it so that any anyone who wants to launch a tech business can come to us. So obviously the problem to that are there's like ge geographical problems. We want to be able to scale our models to work in any country in the world, any city. Um, obviously local startup culture is very different in different places, so we need to be able to tap into A, the kind of getting people into us, but also how startups are launched in different countries. Um, there's also a lot of kind of internal operations, things we need to work through. So how do we, uh, you know, set ourselves up to be able to run that many startups through our model? Because, you know, we, we want to keep the personal bespoke touch that every startup gets because obviously every startup is different and there's contextual issues. So we need to be able to uh, uh, flex our model to apply to anyone, but then equally we have to have it a uh, robust enough process so that you know, new PMs like Amar can come in, quickly learn that um, without having to sort of purely rely on the people themselves. They need some sort of framework around them, which is what we've spent the last three years working on. It's the new create framework, which in, in any startup can go through. Um, we have talented PMs and designers and developers to run that. Um, so that's what we're working on at the moment, which is really good. I wish you the best of luck. This is a unique model and I, I hope you scale and, and you grow very good as a sturdy business. Thanks for taking the time. Growth comes in different uh, shapes and, 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 and different ways. One of them is internal growth, one of them is external growth in customers. Let's talk about the people side of growth. Yeah. Um, can you talk us through that in terms of co-founders, uh, the early hires in the company yeah. who've been instrumental in your growth? How big is the team now? So we're about 80 around the world. Um, between Poland, uh, London and India. Um, so we built the business um, from day one. So I had a partner in India, uh, Vishal, who I'd known for about 12 years. He built a pre previous business with me, previous tech business. Um, what was that? So it was an online musical instrument uh, retail company selling musical instruments online. Um, and he was the third or fourth time lucky using a, using a developer. Um, and then sort of we thought, well, let's, let's do something together. People were coming to me and saying, um, you know, how do, I, how do I build a tech yeah. business? I started doing stuff with his company over in India. And we thought, let's do this, let's do this full time. And then uh, Dan 
uh, who's our COO, and Pavel, our CTO, they came in within the first six months. Uh, they've been instrumental, absolutely key. And then we've we just made some really, really good hires. So for people who don't know the business and who don't know what you know about the business uh, and potentially thinking about joining one of your offices, yeah. what are some things that you would have them know about this business and the culture here? So, so we are, uh, we hire for culture and DNA first. That's the absolute most important thing for us. So we've, we've very, very strict on who we hire. So we've got a, an internal DNA document that we, that we share with all of the uh, people who are going to join us and sort of let them see that first. And if that doesn't... What, what does that document say? So it's like the type of people we hire, how we act on a, how we like to try and act on a day-to-day -day basis, what we're trying to do. Um, so it'll be like, for example, we, we, we hire um, people who are autonomous. So we don't want to micromanage anyone. We're very keen just to let people get on with it. We trust people just to get on with it. We're an output type of company, not hours at desk, yeah. hours at the desk. You know, it's all things that are... Um, the best ways to build, to build a team. What are some things that you've personally learned uh, growing as a team about people's decisions that you did not know potentially in, in the beginning? Uh, what I've learned is that you have to give people, so we're, we're really keen on transparency as well. So we share our numbers internally with all the staff, whether we're making profit, whether we're making a loss. Um, and I think I've learned that the more transparency, the more context you can give people, the better. That allows them to make the best decisions that they can. Um, so I, I think that more information is always better than less information. So if you're a bit worried about sharing information with a team, if they're the right people, they will take it and they will, they will run with it. If you start trying to protect people and not give people information, um, then I think you're in trouble. So if you're going for a rocky two or three months and you don't tell people, then how can people help? I just think the more information you give people, the better. Uh, let's, let's, let's do a little segue here and talk about the tech tools that you depend on as a business, that you've depended on either to grow or at this stage. Sure. And what I mean by that is usually subscription services. So it's just, to be honest with you, it's all the obvious ones. Trello, Slack, uh, GitHub, um, Zoom. You know, we're, we've, we've, we've got a team around the world starting to go a little bit more remote as a company now just to most important thing for us is the best talent, not where they're based. The Zoom is really important. Uh, I couldn't run the business without Slack. You know, it's just so important. The ability to be able to be on your phone and have great conversations with people. Um, I would say that they're the, they're, the, they're the core thing. They're the core. Can you talk us uh, through your future milestones and what would you have people know about the business? So we're looking to target the, the, the sort of great startup ecosystems of the world. Um, you know, Sydney. New York, places around Europe, Berlin. Um, that's a massive ambition for us. Um, so, uh, and then also further around the UK as well. Scotland, Wales, um, Manchester. So geographical growth is one. Geographical, because London is fantastic. Love it, I'm a Londoner. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, there's other stuff out there. Okay, okay, makes sense. Um, any other numerics uh, that, you, that you follow closely? So other, other future milestones, I mean, we're raising money at the moment, uh, raising money inside the next three months. I, th I think the big one really is that, is that 200. So, you know, we want to get to a position where we're doing 20, 30, 40 a year. This, this model is quite unique in, in a lot of senses and uh, there are challenges with that and, yeah. and, and the biggest challenge is getting people to understand what it is. Agreed. Really quickly. Yeah. Um, our message, our I'm so un... I'm so not happy with our messaging at all. We know what we are internally as a, as a proposition, but often um, founders who talk to us, they only really know what we really do after talking to us, uh, and then they get it. Um, but as you say, it's unique. Not many people do it. We need to really showcase the value. You know, we've 90% of startups fail, 90% of our startups are still going. You know, so we need to really get that across to, to people. So the uniqueness in uh, unique uniqueness is, is great but there's also often a challenge because if no one's really done it before how do you communicate that uh, and get and get that across to potential founders i mean uh, uh, thanks for doing this i think startups of london's purpose and what what this problem is they, they, they align well we are trying essentially help you get that message across yeah. across and um, one last question i have and this is more for the entrepreneurs other than rather than founders and, and people who have essentially built this but we're trying to build their business so what is something that you, you see entrepreneurs get constantly wrong? Yeah, um, I would say that there are a few things. Um, if they're building tech, they get obsessed with the idea, the solution in their head before they define the problem. So a lot of founders come to us and say, I've got this great idea, this is what it looks like. Oh, okay. You know, and it's, it, 
they might have already decided that it's... So don't love the solution, love the problem. Love the problem, love the customers. Just be, just be obsessed with building a great business. Don't, don't be obsessed with building a chatbot, for example. You know, who cares if it's a chatbot, if it's an app or whatever it is. Um, another thing I think they, uh, I often see is the opposite. People stewing on an idea for too long. You don't need to go and raise two, three hundred K to get going. Sometimes founders just get obsessed with it has to look pretty. It has to be, has, you know, because because ultimately it's their it's their baby again. But we would much rather just get it to the market as quickly as possible and it, and experiment. There's a combination of both of those there. Don't go all into it and start spending 200 grand on the build before you've identified the problem. But also don't spend a year just thinking about it and and, and doing research without actually going to the market and doing proper research. Well, you're doing something unique. Uh, I hope we can at least contribute somewhat uh, to, to getting the word out on that. Thank you. And I think the world needs different models. Yeah. Because we are, we are just all trying to figure out at the end of the day, aren't we? Uh, like the VCs, accelerators, incubators, these are yeah. just new terms. These are the terms that have generated in, that, that in the last 10 years. I think there's a lot of noise out there and I think a lot of times it's overcomplicated. I think if you're a good business person, you know, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a barrier for you to go and build a tech business. We think, we think anyone, anyone can be a, a, a tech founder. Um, it's just about making that as simple uh, as possible for people, um, cutting through the noise uh, and, and trying to do it in a way where uh, people can do it you know, and de-risk it. Thanks, thanks for taking the time. This has been a wonderful dialogue. Pleasure, thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.